The Pod Connect Studios, high in the Rockies, at the beautiful Beaver Creek Resort. This is a special cannabis crowdfunding episode of the Raising Cannabis Capital Show. I feel a discontent. I'm finally facing it all. Fearless. <laughs> Today on Raising Cannabis Capital, we are continuing our cannabis crowdfunding series with Matt Melbourne from Republic. Matt, welcome to the show. Thanks so much for having me on, Dan. Well, I'm glad you could join us. We have a lot to talk about today because over the last few years, a ton of companies have used equity crowdfunding as a way to raise capital. And Republic is a platform that hosts crowdfunding campaigns, and you've hosted campaigns for a number of companies that we've had as guests on this show. And I think one thing that companies need to understand is that Republic doesn't just accept every company that applies. And that's where I wanted to start today. What criteria does Republic use to select companies? So we're a platform and we're regulated by the SEC and FINRA. So the offerings that we pick, like we have to have a lens for quality. And that's really important to us. And the legal term for what we are is a gatekeeper. So the types of opportunities that we bring to our investors, it matters. The The way that we think about it is a little bit different than the industry as a whole. So some platforms take a more a true open platform approach, whereas Republic is on the other end and, and takes a much more curated approach. So of the companies that apply to raise with us on the cold application, like we accept less than a percent of those to actually run a campaign. But from a cannabis perspective, it it kind of mirrors what we look for in the startup space or in real estate or in small, medium-sized businesses or or crypto, which are all the different types of assets that we have on the platform that folks can invest in. So we're looking for like a stellar team that has experience in what they're doing and maybe even has an exit under their belt and has sold a company and, and made a return for investors. Or we're looking for a company with traction. So there's sales and there's revenue and there's growth um, in both of those metrics that kind of shows promise to the company. And another important piece that's maybe different from a traditional individual investor or an institution that's important for a platform like Republic is what's sort of like the community behind the company or the product or the founders that's going to support the raise? Is there an avid customer base or a user base behind the product? Is there this like partner or supporter network that the company would like to engage with an investment campaign by making these people owners? Those are kind of the, the three big things that span industry and, and the verticals on Republic. That's, it. that's interesting. It's the first I've heard about that. And I think that it really clarifies some thoughts I have. And before we get too far into this, I want to make sure that people understand that crowdfunding falls under federal jurisdictions. So what's federally illegal businesses are precluded. Can you break down this for us and tell us what type of cannabis hemp companies are accepted in Republic and what types are not? You're exactly right. Cannabis is federally regulated, federally illegal. The piece that's most important on our end is we have an escrow agent who's our banking partner. And so it's at their discretion which cannabis deals we can host and which we can't because they're the ones that process the investments and the funds that are raised in the campaign. So what we found is they're actually more liberal and open than you might expect. For example, we actually have a true cannabis brand raising on Republic right now. It's called Union Electric. They're technically not plant touching, even though they are a brand that the the company does have a cannabis product. So there, if it depends on the way that the company is structured and if it's plant touching or not, that determines if the company can run a campaign. So what I always say to the cannabis companies is there's probably a good chance that for other reasons, you've set up the company in a way that may make it possible for you to, to keep your money in a bank or for other legal reasons, you've set up a company in a specific way that may make you able to actually run a campaign. So I always recommend applying, sending us your materials, and we can get the thumbs up from our escrow agent on, on whether we can host the campaign. That's really optimistic. I'm glad you said that because you know, we hear that that's most of the time no banking, no banking, but I guess that a lot of it has to do with how you structure your business. Let's say that someone has decided that they want to go forward and do a crowdfunding campaign, say in Q1 of 2022. What should they be doing now so that they're prepared? I think the biggest piece is to make the offering as attractive as possible is to focus on 
setting up your business, building your business and making it an, an attractive investment opportunity. And then once you're there and you're saying, hey, this is a good point to accept outside investment, it's going to be attractive to investors. So whenever you decide you want to launch a month to two months before then really start focusing on engaging with Republic and going through the onboarding process with us. Okay. Focus on the business is the biggest piece. Yeah. So building up your, like you said, your customer base and showing some profitability and some traction, I think, like you mentioned in your earlier answer, when you fill out an application to Republic, what are some things that would be helpful to, to maybe get that application to the top of the pile? What are some things you can include? Yeah. So our high level application is super easy. We collect just a few pieces of information. Who are you? What's your name? What's the company name? A pitch deck or other business summary, a little description on the traction. And that's basically it. So the way to get your application reviewed as quickly as possible is to include as much information in that short application up front. You'd be surprised how many companies just don't include a deck or any business summary or they leave that section blank. That makes it impossible for us to evaluate. So just be honest, be truthful about where your company's at. Give us everything up front and and that'll be the best way to, to get the application evaluated and to get you on a call with someone on the investment team. Hi, listeners. This is Maggie Kelly, co-host of the Cannabis Capital Podcast, Blunt Truths from the Cannabis Economy. Join me and my co-host, Ross O'Brien, leading venture capitalist and the author of Cannabis Capital, How to Get Your Business Funded in the Cannabis Economy, as we go beyond the headlines and remnants of the green rush. If you're a cannabis investor or entrepreneur, join us for thought-provoking, elevated conversations on the cannabis economy. Cannabis Capital, the podcast, premiering Thursday, September 16th. Okay, so pretend that you're done, is I'll say... Can you hear me? Is this is this thing on? And you say, Ross, I told you we're not done with the promo yet. I love that you want to script an interruption. I think it's funny. I think it's is it not funny? Do you guys just think a lot of things are funny? (laughs) Talking about the investor side for a minute. Crowdfunding is not typically a short-term investment. So, so most of the investors realize this is a startup or early stage business. So they don't expect it immediately to turn right around with profit. But on average, how should investors plan to expect a return? This is an investment advice. And every offering on the platform, there's no guarantee of getting money back and making a return. In -hmm. fact, especially on the startup side, a lot of these are early stage enough where it's actually pretty likely that you'll get zero back. You won't earn a return. But what you're optimizing for, hopefully, is to hit that opportunity. Invest in a diversity of deals. Invest in a spread, ideally at least 10 plus, so that you get access to the upside of one that happens to do the 50, the 100, the 1,000x, what you put in. What's definitely important for investors is to have a spread of investments, diversify. If it works out, it's probably going to be at least a a five, seven-year-plus time horizon before you potentially see that return. Yeah, but those returns, like you said, these are what I would classify as a risky investment, but you're not talking about a lot of money. Sometimes the minimum investment is as low as $100. Exactly right. $100 $100 is usually the uh, the minimum investment. So like you said, if you invest $1,000, put $100 on 10 different companies, you never know. You, you get that one home run and it's in it multiple X. That's really exciting. There are a bunch of crowdfunding platforms. What makes Republic unique? I'd say one of the things that we talked about in the beginning is curation. And why that's important is on the company side and on the founder side, We want raising on Republic to be a high signal sort of opportunity. We don't want to be seen as more like the Kickstarter or Indiegogos of the world where anyone with a business plan that isn't a bad actor, hasn't committed fraud, can raise. We definitely want investors and founders to to see that this is a high signal platform, which is good for going on to raise more money. It's good for building your brand in the industry as a strong, reputable brand. So I think curation is, is a main differentiator. But that curation for founders, it leads to other benefits beyond that one level below, which is better customer service. We have a really large team that's able to take companies through the onboarding and the campaign process in a really white glove way. And we can do that because the platform isn't isn't as open 
widely as other platforms, our success rates are higher. So we have a 95% success rate in the past two years of companies reaching at least their minimum target amount. For other platforms, that's probably much lower, closer to the 50 to 70% range. Our average campaign sizes are higher because it's fewer deals on average and, and higher success rates. So that sort of curation allows us, I think, for a better experience for the founder in terms of their onboarding and campaign management process. And then for investors, it's obviously a great thing that we curate as well. And that's, I think that's a differentiator. That's the main one. Yeah. I think it's, it's a nice benefit if you can say, Hey, look at, I got my campaign posted on Republic. You're sending a message to everybody. Well, we'll have all of Matt's and Republic's information in the show notes. So if you're considering raising money or looking for a company to invest in, check out their website and please make sure you read everything and understand everything before you invest. Matt, thanks for being on the show today. Thanks for having me on, Dan, and um, excited to meet some of the entrepreneurs in the cannabis space that are listeners. So definitely reach out, apply, and looking forward to getting in touch. Yeah, yeah, yeah.